Hello viewers, this is Scyther88, back with a new series of videos. So, today, I know I haven't been um, uploading uh, my uh, videos recently for the past couple weeks. Uh, I got kind of busy, ca got caught up in some stuff, so um, yeah, so all of that stuff is kind of sort, uh, sorted out now. So, I'm kind of trying to get back into uh, making uh, videos again. Well, I had an idea of uh, starting kind of a virology lecture series. Um, viruses is what I work on, so I figured this might be something good to uh, put on my channel. So, so um, I hope you guys uh, will enjoy this. And um, so today we're going to start with uh, the first lecture of my series. And um, this series, I'm going to preface uh, it with this. I'm not going to... Um, just kind of lecture for hours and hours at a time. Um, instead, kind of treat this as a uh, condensed virology session. So if you're taking a general virology course in college or at graduate school or whatever, um, hopefully you'll be able to watch these videos and kind of really reinforce the ideas that you've learned. Um, I, I will go into details um, but I'm not going to, you know, really harp on certain things because I really don't know what you guys are, you know, what you guys are being taught in class and stuff. So this is kind of more of a general course for people who are interested in virology or who are taking virology courses who want to, you know, really brush up on concepts or really understand certain core fundamentals that all uh, um, students should know who are interested in virology. Okay, so anyway... Virology 101. So today's lecture is going to be about what is a virus. And um, for these lectures, um, all you need to have is a general biology or microbiology background. That's all. You, know, um, you should know what DNA is, or RNA is, or if I say protein, what is, a, what is a protein made out of, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, so let's go ahead and get on with uh, lecture number one. So what is a virus? So here we have kind of the general six kingdoms of life, you might want to say. And we have plants, we have animals, we have fungi, or fungi, depending how you pronounce that. We have protists, we have eubacteria, which are basically uh, the bacteria that you found most commonly or discussed about, you know, salmonella, E. coli, they're all, they, these are all uh, eubacteria. And then we have archaea bacteria, which is kind of like the really intense bacteria, is what I like to call it, the stuff that can um, only grow in very uh, extreme temperatures and conditions, like in thermal vents or whatever. Okay, so by looking at the six kingdoms of life, now where do you think viruses belong into? I want to give you guys a couple of seconds to think about that. Okay, so... If you answer none of the above, then you're actually correct, right? So, viruses do not belong in any of these kingdoms. They're not really classified um, under any of any of this. But why, though? Well, here's the problem. So, what I showed you was just the six kingdoms of life, right? Well, are viruses really alive, okay? So, what does being alive really mean? There's no universal or absolute definition of this. However, there are a lot of, um, you know, characteristics that, that people agree on, like growth, reproduction, metabolism, homeostasis, you know, etc., etc., replication, which is basically re reproduction. Um, so, the thing is, though, do viruses have all these characteristics that make them alive? Well, that's kind of the uh, complicated part. Um, viruses, they are technically not alive because... They sh um, because they only share um, some of the traits uh, with other organisms. The main thing that people say is that um, have against that viruses are not alive, that they do not metabolize. Okay. So a question then becomes is that are viruses actually these micro zombies? You might want to say are they these brain eating undead life forms that are on the brink of life? Uh, well, not really, okay. They are not zombies, but they are not living either, okay. So, what I like to call them, and what other people um, call them, they are intracellular obligate replicators. 
what that means is that viruses cannot do anything by themselves, okay? They need a host, like a parasite. In order for them to grow or replicate, they need to be inside of a host cell in order for that to happen. If they're sitting out on a table or on a surface or whatever, they're, they're not going to do anything. They're just going to sit there. And worst case scenario, they're just going to degrade over time, okay? So they can't do anything outside of a host. So they need a host. So they are obligate intracellular replicators, okay? They're not zombies, although they kind of are in a way. All right, anyway, here are some frequently asked questions that um, about viruses that I sometimes hear. And by answering these questions, you guys should have a better understanding of what is a virus. Okay, so what host do they infect? How big are these viruses? Um, what are they made out of really? And how are these viruses classified? All right, let's go through them one by one. What hosts do they infect? Okay, in short, everything. The six kingdoms of life that I showed you, um, in each of those kingdoms, you're going to find viruses that infect those hosts, okay? We have animal viruses, we have plant viruses, we have fungi viruses or fungi viruses, otherwise known as mycoviruses. We have bacteria viruses, which are called bacteriophages, and we have protist viruses. It is estimated that there are 10 to the 31st total number of virus particles on this planet. Okay, that is just mind-blowing, all right, because that's millions and millions and millions times more virus particles than stars in the observable universe, okay? 10 to the 31st is not just an astronomical number. They're found everywhere, okay, in the sea, on land, um, I don't know, in the air, I guess, because birds have viruses, you know what I mean? So they are pretty much um, everywhere and they infect everything, okay? How big are they? So this is a very common question. So viruses are anywhere from 10 to 100 times smaller, okay, smaller than bacteria, which makes sense considering there are bacteriophages that, you know, infect bacteria themselves. So yeah, every average of 10 to 10, 10 to 100 times. Why I say 10 to 100 is because, you know, some viruses are much larger than other ones. Um, for example, some viruses are, you know, 30 nanometers, while others are actually several hundred nanometers. So it's kind of hard to gauge. So it's somewhere between that area, but definitely smaller than the bacteria though. Although, before I move on, there are these large groups of viruses, such as the Mimi virus, Mimi virus, that actually are on par with some bacteria, but I don't really want to get into that right now. Um, but for the most part, they are um, smaller, smaller than bacteria. Okay. What are they? Okay. What are these viruses made out of? Uh, and when I say what are they, I'm going to strict, strictly talk about animal viruses. Now, Hold up for a second. Why am I only going to talk about animal viruses? And pretty much all of my lectures are just going to be focusing on animal viruses. Well, first of all, my area of expertise is uh, generally animal viruses. That's kind of what my educational training is in. And also, um, animal viruses is kind of what people care about these days, right? Ebola, influenza, MERS, CoV, you know, even SARS, you know, whatever, HIV, they're all animal viruses, okay? And really, I'm more most interested in animal viruses. So that's basically what I'm going to just focus on, okay? And, um, okay, so let's get started. So animal viruses, or just, I'm going to say viruses from now on, um, so, uh, will always have either a DNA or RNA genome, okay? Never both. Um, I, I mean, maybe in the future well, someone will discover something of a hybrid, but right now, as of today, uh, viruses will only have RNA or DNA and genomes, okay? That's also true, of course, for other viruses, not just animal viruses, okay? And, um, and include, so, so it has a uh, genetic material, uh, genetic material genome, which, duh, of course. Um, over the, over its genome, it's, what, it, what is covering its genome, the, it, the, it's called a protein coat, okay? Or a virus capsid. Um, as uh, the official term would be. 
Okay, so we have its genetic material inside this protein shell or coat, okay, or capsid. And um, some viruses, that's all they are, okay? They have a genetic, they have genetic material inside and they have a protein coat, and that's all they have. And for these viruses, we call them non envelope viruses, okay? The most uh, quote unquote basic. I mean, they're not really basic, but the structure wise, they are very basic. And other viruses, in addition to this protein code, they will also have this lipid bilayer, okay, that's derived um, during egress from the host, host cell. Um, I will get into that you know, much later on, so don't worry about that. But just know that they have this virus membranes that's derived from the host, host cell. And these viruses are called enveloped viruses, okay? So we have non enveloped viruses and enveloped viruses. Um, some other things I want to mention is that this is the very simple outlook on viruses. Of course, you know, inside the capsid, there's going to be other proteins as well, other viral proteins or structural proteins, I should say. And um, there's going to be virus proteins uh, embedded on the lip in the lipid membrane for virus uh, for envelope viruses. Again, that's much more complicated, and I'll get that I'll get to that later on. But I just want you to know this is kind of the most basic outlook of viruses. Okay, and another thing is that why I don't talk about other viruses? Um, for example, bacteria viruses. Okay, so viruses that infect bacteria. They have other protein structures too. Uh, they have other protein structures that are not found in animal viruses. So um, that's why I kind of don't want to talk about those right now. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So how are these viruses classified, right? Well, we have kind of the uh, official way, right? By order, family, subfamily, genus, species, yada yada yada, right? And that's kind of like by the ICTV, the official method. There's other ways of classification as well. Um, we have the Baltimore classification, which um, a lot of people know this. I mean, I, I believe probably all, I mean, I would say all virologists know this and people uh, use this all the time. And this is how uh, we group viruses based on its genome content, right? RNA or DNA and its replication strategy. How does it make, how does the virus make more of itself? Okay, that's what I mean. Um, here is the Baltimore classification system. Now, if you're looking at this and you're confused, uh, this is a little bit overwhelming. Don't worry about this. You don't have to know this right now. Uh, I will cover more in depth of these specific types and groups of viruses much, much later on in my lectures. So yeah, so right now I just want to give you an overview of what I mean by virus classification. So we have double-stranded DNA viruses, okay? the sdna or such as herpes viruses we have single-stranded dna viruses like parvo we have double-stranded rna like real viruses and then we have something called plus um plus sense um, or positive sense single-stranded rna viruses like coronal viruses and then we have negative sense uh negative sense single-stranded rna viruses now what does positive and negative sense mean um what this means it really reflects its replication strategy okay so single stranded uh positive sense single stranded rna viruses is able to use its genome directly for translation okay because it's in the quote unquote positive sense uh, whereas negative sense rna viruses cannot go directly into translation it needs to make messenger rna or a positive sense first before it can initiate translation. Uh, we have single-stranded RNA, RT viruses, like retroviruses. Um, RT stands for reverse transcriptase, and which is the, an enzyme that converts, that converts um, RNA to DNA. Um, again, I don't really want to talk too much about this right now. I'll get into that much later. And then group seven, we have double-stranded DNA reverse transcriptase viruses, RT viruses, okay? Um, some uh, very well-known um, single-stranded uh, uh, single stranded RNA viruses would be influenza, right? Okay, uh, uh, a very well-known uh, single-stranded RNA RT virus or retrovirus would be HIV, okay? HIV is a uh, 
RNA virus that carries a virus transcriptase in this genome. Uh, it's not in this genome, I should say in this capsid. But anyway, I'll get to that later on. So this is kind of the general classification system based on these uh, replication strategies and its genome. Okay. So that's basically what I want to talk about today. This video kind of went on longer than I really wanted to, but uh, I hope I got my point across at least. Um, again, if you have any questions or concerns, just leave a comment right below this video. Um, my next lecture, um, hopefully I'll get this uploaded sometimes uh, soon, it's going to be about entry of non-enveloped viruses. Okay. Uh, if you knew nothing about viruses, at this point, you should know what non-envelope viruses mean, what, what they mean, right? If you don't know, you know uh, rewind this video, uh, you know, a couple minutes and you, uh, about my virus, uh, about the virus structures, and you should know what they are. Um, anyway, so you're right, entry of non-envelope viruses. Now, why am I going to start with this? Well, first of all, like I said, viruses need to be in cells to replicate, right? So what better way to start off the next lecture is to introduce how do viruses get into cells, okay? I'm just going to start with non-envelope viruses just because there's no really reason, no other reason besides that. I'll probably do a video, of course, on envelope viruses as well. But anyway, whoa, this video has just gone on way too long. I'm not even sure if anyone's listening at this point. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please uh, leave your comments, uh, anything below. Please like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, everyone, this is Scyther88 signing off.